Three years ago, I played my first proper chess tournament at the age of 16 and placed third in the under 1500 ELO category. Since then, I've made a lot of progress with my chess journey, and obviously there are many reasons for that, but in today's video, I want to take you through some of the openings that have helped me to go from 1500-ish ELO to 2000, where I hover around now. I'll make a subsequent video if you guys enjoy this one for openings that I've used with the black pieces, but I was going to do both and then I realized there is a whole lot of openings to cover. So today we'll be focused on the white pieces and I'm going to be recommending one E4. Of course, you can play D4, you can play C4, you can go for lines like G3 and going for like a King's Indian attack setup. All of those are viable, but I have way more knowledge on 1e4, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. With many of the openings that I cover in this video, I will have playlists dedicated to videos in which I play those openings on my channel. So if you want some further in-depth information on some of the openings we go through today, check out my channel playlists and I'll link a bunch of them below as well in the video description. So I hope that is of use to you guys. With that, with that being said, let's get into first, the Sicilian. Against 1e4, Sicilian is the most commonly played opening at basically all levels, and it's because it's a great opening. It's very combative. You can go down like loads and loads of theory, and I mean, you can study easily like 20 moves in several lines. And that is why throughout, well, since around 1500 ELO, when I realized that I have absolutely no right trying to play my main nine main line Sicilians such as this because I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing and I don't want to study all the theory, I started playing d4 which is the Smith Mora Gambit and after c takes d4 you go c3. A lot of people play d3 and it's actually quite a viable line for black. If you're a Sicilian player I would actually recommend this because it takes white out of a lot of what he wants to do. After bishop d3, you can go for moves like knight c6, and the game continues. But most people, of course, take, and after knight takes, I have like a 60-odd percent, um, 61 percent win um, percentage. Yeah, that's terribly phrased. But basically, I win a lot of games from this position, or I used to, because I don't really play the smith Mora anymore, and I'll get into why I stopped playing the smith Mora when we go on to what I currently play. But this is viable, like, way past 2000, for sure. Maybe when you approach something like 22, 2300, it becomes a, lit, a bit less good to play. Uh, I could have just said worse. <laughs> um, but the Smith Mora is a fantastic opening. Like, typically, games will go something like knight c6, knight f3, let's say, like, d6, bishop c4. And I'm just going to show you the, like, general setup for it. And black can already make some mistakes. I think knight to f6 is already a mistake after e5. Because after d e5. Ah, so bishop f7 doesn't work because the knight is um, defending. But the move is in knight d8. Sorry, queen d8. And if king d8, then I assume you go knight g5 to attack f7. And if the king goes back to e8, then you have knight to um b5 to go after c7 and if knight takes d8 then knight b5 you go after c7 and yeah you really can't do a lot about it as black someone's tried to play this against me but you literally just have to retreat and you lose the rook oh no you're just mated so um yeah the smith mora is very very venomous black has to be quite um quite careful with what he plays I often get, I often used to have games like this, something like castles, let's say knight to f6. A lot of people played a6 as well to stop the knight coming to b5, so okay, we can go through that line. We need two, something like knight f6 and rook d1. This is the main setup of the uh, Smith Mora. And one of the main points is that this queen struggles to find safety. Because currently, right, white has given up the D and C pawns for the C pawn, right? That means that the D file is semi-open, and putting a rook on D1 can make it difficult for black to stop moves like E5 from coming in with a pin on the pawn. 
So a lot of the time, black will try and save his queen. Bishop f4 can cause some more problems. And, I mean, the games go on. You get some very interesting lines. There's loads and loads of traps that black can fall into because the Smith Moor is a very aggressive opening. But I don't have time in the video to go over everything. So, that is one of the lines that I would recommend against the Sicilian. I did not mean to do that. Um, you give up a pawn, you get really quick development, and you don't have to win the game immediately with the white pieces. The point is that you have loads of space in the center, really fast development, quite a simple setup, like rooks on d1, c1, queen on e2, bishop on c4, knights go out to the normal squares. The dark square bishop normally goes to like e3 or f4 to maybe induce the move e5 to weaken the d6 pawn. You'll get a lot of the same ideas, and it's incredibly fun to play as well. However, from about a year or so ago, against the Sicilian defense, I started playing A3, because this was recommended to me in a Gotham chess course, and it's surprisingly good. The whole point, I have loads and loads of videos on the channel. The playlist will be linked below for um, the videos that I have in this opening. After something like knight c6, the point is to sacrifice the pawn on b4. I have a 62% win rate in this position because it's just incredibly good. There's so many traps that black can fall into. d5 is basically losing. Um, yeah, you, you black just basically loses after knight to a3. And he needs to know some incredible theory to not just get absolutely slaughtered by these ideas. But this is a great opening. Now, what I do struggle with, however, is when black declines the gambit and plays a move like e6, you're not supposed to take now. You're supposed to play something like b5 to attack the knight. That's the general rule of thumb. If black doesn't take, then attack the knight. Now, if the knight isn't on c6, then I suppose you can take and then play d4 to get a tempo on the bishop. But typically, the knight does come out to c uh, c6. And after something like knight to e5, you can try f4. I don't know if that's the best move. I think bishop b2 is better. I think I had that in a recent video, actually. And you get some very interesting positions. If um, instead you have something like e6, again, you give up the pawn. You take a massive center. And you're, I, I literally have, after d5, 75% win rate, 25% draw rate. After the move e5 white is just so much better because black has so many problems with the g7 pawn essentially and nothing can come to the f6 square so this is an incredible opening if you want to learn more about it i genuinely would recommend the gotham course but if you don't want to spend money on it then i would encourage you to watch the videos on my channel in the playlist linked below for this opening the next one i want to get on to is a couple of openings against e5 well three in total because e5 is the most common response make well second most common response after the sicilian probably i have most of my games with knight to f3 on the second move i don't play that anymore and um, maybe incredibly occasionally in like bullet games but there is lots and lots that can happen from this position typically you'll get knight to c6 and i actually started playing chess with bishop to c4 going into Italian games, and, I mean, obviously everyone starts with the, um, with the fried liver attack, like, that is one of the first openings that many people learn, um, but, you know, people can go for the, uh, Joko Piano, I think this is Joko Piano, and, um, why do I have Bishop takes F7, it's my most played move here, oh, this is the Jerome Gambit, <laughs> that, that was a thing for a while. <laughs> I can't believe I actually used to play this. That's hilarious. Uh, it's not good. Don't play it. Don't play it. That's something like bishop to c5. c3 is a, maybe a move. Oh, b4 is the Evans gambit, which it looks like I actually used to play a bit. So that's kind of cool. I didn't really have good win rates in it, though. And that's one of the reasons that I wouldn't recommend the Italian. Better than the Italian, I think, is the Roy Lopez. Here I have like a 67% win rate. Uh, which actually really shocks me. I might have to like play this a bit more now because that's kind of mad. Um, and the Roy Lopez is incredibly deep in theory, but the way that I've always liked to play it with the white pieces, 
This is just the uh, Morphe defense, the most common variation. You could play the exchange, but I don't really recommend it. My favorite line is D3, which is the anti-martial gambit. And don't, don't allow the martial, because I, I used to play the martial with black. I will cover that in the like follow-up video to this, going over my openings with black that I've played to reach 2000 D-low. You can castle, but D3 I think is so much better. I have like an 80% win rate here. And the whole idea is essentially, you know, after black plays some normal moves, you build up with moves like C3. You go maybe rook e1, maybe h3. You might maneuver your knight via d2 and f1 to g3 to maybe look at places like f5. The bishop can come out. A4 can be played at any point. I think it's incredibly easy to play here with black and, sorry, to play with white. And black needs to know either an awful lot of theory or just, I don't know, play some really nice ideas to actually, like, not be worse here. At a super GM level, these kinds of lines are more so drawish, but I think anywhere below 2000, even below, like, I don't know, 2300, why I believe will always have the advantage in these anti martial Spanish games because I think it is so simple to play with the white pieces. And white is kind of just in the driver's seat, he controls most of the pawn breaks. And yes, black can try and make d5 happen, but a lot of the time that'll be to the detriment of black if he can't execute it properly. The next opening I want to go over is what I now play against e5, which is not knight f3. I went through a phase of playing the King of Gambit, but we're not going to go over that because it's not that good. Um, I play the Vienna. I have a 64% win rate in this opening. It's a fantastic opening. Again, inspired by Gotham Chess, in all honesty. But it's great. Against Knight F6, I have a 71% win rate. I've won um, in Vienna Gambit positions like this in many classical games i beat a 2200 in a classical over the board game in this opening we went to like some weird end game where i just was more familiar with it because i play this opening uh, i was very happy with that game obviously and you get some incredibly interesting positions after this sort of move order um i would I would uh, recommend rather than DC3, which I think might be what Gotham recommends, I prefer BC3. And unless Blacks know some incredible theory with moves like D4 in this position, uh, it's really, really difficult for Black to play this. There is an interesting line with Bishop to E7, and the whole point is to try and play a quick F6. This is difficult to deal with. Um, I believe... Well, black, white can essentially force a draw like this, um, because if he tries to go for more, then queen to e8 essentially wins for black. But the Vienna is a fantastic opening, really at like anything below 2200 sort of level. I say that because I know that I've beaten a 2200 with this opening fairly comfortably, fairly comfortably, all things considered. Um... And I would encourage anyone who is struggling for like a mainline opening with white, this is probably the opening that I play the most of, to try this out. Again, loads of videos on the Vienna on my channel, so check those out in the playlist linked below if you're interested. Next, I want to go over the French defense. The French defense is very combative for black, and I spent most of my... Uh, years playing chess, playing d4, which is the main line, really. And after d5, going for... Initially, I played the advanced, and I was not a fan of this. With white, there is a lot of theory, and black, more than likely, knows way more of it than you do. So, I started playing the Tarash, and I honestly... I had some very interesting games in a very specific line, which a lot of people went into. But if people didn't go into the line that I specifically wanted them to, I just had terrible results. I will show you what the line is because it's incredibly interesting. Um, black essentially piles pressure onto the d4 pawn. And after queen to b6, black has one, two, three attackers. White has two defenders. Knight b3 isn't playable because c4 is a fork. And the whole point is to sacrifice the pawn. 
No, not like that. After this, go knight to f3. And after queen goes back to b6, there is a very specific move that you need to know if you're going to play this line, and it's queen to a4. Pinning the knight to the king, and it is so, so difficult for black to get out of this position. It's really tough. White has some incredible development here, and he can launch some attacks quite well. Moves like bishop to e3, trying to give up the b2 pawn are very viable. Moves like rook to c1, trying to infiltrate on the c file to a square like c7. This is very good for white. And after something like... There's a game I had with bishop to c5. The move queen g4 is the idea. To swing the queen via a4 to g4 to target the g7 pawn. Because you control the square on f6. This is a common theme you'll see in a lot of the openings that I play is having a pawn on e5 to control f6 and then try and undermine the g7 pawn. I personally really like that structure. And then you can force black to lose his castling rights with something like king to f8. And something like g6 is just incredibly weakening to the dark squares in the black position. So this was a line I was very successful in, but this is a very specific line and basically every other line I, was, I, I just sucked at. So I instead started playing the b3 french i have won several classical games in this position and the reason i keep on bringing up over the board classical games is because a lot of the lines that i play i am aware look kind of dubious and they're very well a lot of them are gambits a lot of them where you win the pawn back very quickly some of them not but i have used these to great success in classical games they're not just gimmicky bullet and blitz sort of openings they're very very viable at like 2000 DLO over the board classical level, which is why I'm making a big point of this. The B3 French is what I now play, and the entire point is to give up the E4 pawn. I have a 63% win rate in this position. I think it also really helps that this is incredibly obscure. It's I think um, the computer gives about plus 0.1 in this position, so it's not bad for white. It's basically drawish, except it's not drawish because this is incredibly intricate black has a far better under sorry white has a far better understanding of the theory because it's not something that black will face very often if ever really and the point is to go queen e2 and it's impossible for black to defend the e4 pawn further you can win it back at any time you want moves like g4 g5 are available to try and undermine the knight and then support the pawn with h4 to launch a kingside attack in the future Bishop g2 after g4 to target the pawn is also very good. Your The entire point is to castle queenside. And if, um, if something like bishop to b4 is played in this position and black wants to take, you're supposed to take with the d pawn to open up the rook on the d file, play c4, get control of d5, open the bishop back up. And having this like dark squared bishop where black doesn't have a dark squared bishop on this long diagonal is incredibly strong and I have a 100% win rate in this position. Granted, I've only played three games in this position. I think anyone, regardless of whether you've seen this opening before or not, would love to have this in any game. So the B3 French, I think, is incredibly strong. I've had some insanely interesting positions, very attacking games, one over the board, which I think I've actually made a video on. I think it was one of my um, like very first videos, if you want to check that out. And yeah, I love this opening. Again, playlist will be linked below. I've played many, many games in this opening. I think it's very viable at really sort of any level, to be fair. Below like master level, but realistically, none of you watching this are going to be masters. <laughs> so that's my recommendation against the French. Now for the Caro. The Caro is my favorite opening with black. I play the Karo against e4. I play the Karo against d4, which is then a Slav, but you invite uh, black to go into a Karo by playing c6 on the first move rather than d5. But what happens when you play against your favorite opening? This is always a tough thing, right? Like having to play against the opening that you love. Personally, I don't like playing d4. And you're gonna notice a theme here. <laughs> Because I used to play the advanced variation. I had decent results in it. After bishop to f5, I used to play the tile variation 
with h4, trying to go after the bishop. I had okay results in these positions. What I did like was after h6 going g4. I loved these positions because after bishop to h7, I could go e6, sacrifice the e6 pawn. A lot of people didn't actually take it. They'd rather give up their castling rights after ef7, king f7. But I love to sacrifice this pawn. It makes it very difficult for black to develop because it's hard for this bishop to get out because the e7 pawn is stuck behind the e6 pawn. And as long as you can stop black from playing the move e5, maybe you can try moves like bishop to f4, knight to f3, maybe even f4 in some positions. I found this quite good with white. But what I didn't like was h5. I just had bad results. And I didn't enjoy the position which is what I think is the most important thing. I literally just didn't like the position. I traded the bishop, which I think is the, the correct idea. But white, in my mind, doesn't have a whole lot. I believe the idea is to try and expand on the queen side. But I like attacking games, which is why I'm sure a lot of you can guess what my move is. It's b3. Now, this is worse against the Caro than against the French, and I'll explain why. Because after d5, bishop b2, uh, d e4, knight c3, knight f6, queen e2 is no longer viable because of bishop to f5. Previously, the pawn was on e6 rather than c6, which meant the bishop couldn't come out to f5. Now it can. So, my move now is knight g to e2. I have... Oh my, whoa, I didn't even realize I did this well. I have an 89% win rate in this position. It is over 10 games, so I think that's, or 9, nine or 10 games, the percentages are weird. Might have been different move orders. But I think that's pretty damn good. It's a fairly decent sample size against, you know, 1,900, 2,000 rated players. And the point is that after bishop to f5, you play knight g3, attacking the bishop and the pawn. Bishop g6, h4, similar to the tile variation you will notice, I took the part of that that I enjoyed, and I've kind of made this opening up myself in all honesty. Um, h6 gets met with h5, kicking the bishop back first, and then you go queen to e2, similar to the French, but you put in knight to e2, knight to g3 first. Black can't defend the pawn, you can take it back, and then implement many of the same ideas that you do against the b3 French, except you have a pawn on h5, and this knight is already developed, which... Is it a strength? Is it a weakness? I don't know. I think it's about equal in terms of whether it's better or not, but it's just an interesting position. And again, black is not going to be familiar with these positions, which is part of the reason that I so highly recommend it, because even if it isn't the quote unquote best line, you're going to catch him off like the opposing player off guard because it's weird, right? And you're familiar with it, which I think is way more important than... A the difference between a plus 0 0.1 and a plus 0 0.4, right? Comf like, being comfortable and familiar with the position, I think is way more important. The next opening I want to cover is against the Scandinavian. Against the Scandinavian, I didn't really like going into mainline positions with knight c3, because black just knows it. So I've recently started playing knight to f3, and just going bishop e2 castles and trying to play c4 to get a tempo on the queen rather than knight c3. In all honesty, I'm not that comfortable with these positions. But I think it pr just provides something quite simple, quite basic. There are probably better lines, but the Scandinavian I think is actually a really, really solid opening. Against the um, modern variation which is far more common now than queen takes from what I've seen. I've started playing bishop to b5 check, which I'm a big fan of. And there is many lines with bishop to b5 check. Again, I have had um, games on my channel in that. So you can just check my channel, like search by keyword like Scandinavian or something if you're interested. But in all honesty, the Scandinavian is something that I kind of struggle against. So if you have any recommendations, then please let me know in the comment section below. But this is personally what I go for now. One other thing I want to mention is the modern opening. Because it's something that a lot of people just don't really cover. Because people go, oh, the modern's bad. You should just take the center and win. 
we all know it's not that simple, right? So what I personally like to do is play the 150 attack. There is a reason for it being called the 150 attack, and one of um, the older guys at the chess club that I go to actually explained it to me, which I thought was hilarious. So basically, in England, which is where I'm from, you can probably tell by the accent, um, we, well, we've, we've actually just switched recently, because our chess federation is not FIDE, like really, most of our chess tournaments are not FIDE rated, but they're ECF rated, which stands for English Chess Federation. And our rating system now corresponds to the normal FIDE ELO that we all know and love. But back like three years ago, we had a very weird rating system. The conversion to FIDE from the ECF rating system was like times 7.5 plus 700. So you'd have like a rating of 150 in this case, times it by 7.5, add 700, and you'd get 18, 1820, 1825-ish. Not a perfect conversion, but that was the rating system. The reason it's called the 150 attack, and I will show you what the 150 attack is now, after knight c3, d6, bishop e3, c6, queen to d2. This is an incredibly nice line to play. I like to, sh I, I like to include the move f3 in a lot of these lines to stop knight to f6, knight to g4 to go after the bishop, also to prepare, prepare the move g4 to support h5. <laughs> the reason it's called the 150 attack, remember this corresponds to about 1800 elo, is because the idea was that even a 150 rated player could beat anyone in this opening. That was why it was nicknamed the 150 attack. And it still exists to this day. Um, it, apparently it's also called the Rat Defense Accelerated Gurganitze Variation. I assume Gurganitze is Georgian. It sounds like a very Georgian name. Um, I know some Georgian um, girls from school, like when I used to go to school, who had very similar surnames, so I'm assuming it's Georgian. I feel like I've seen that name before. Anyway, this opening is fantastic against the modern defense. Uh, I had a game with h5, castle, b5, f3, a5, d... Why did I go d5? I have no idea. That's really weird. c5, and then I just won a pawn, and yeah, this is just definitely winning. Black has zero development. And I guess that's a trap black can fall into in the modern, just pushing too many pawns. But the 150 attack in from this position, really, is absolutely fantastic. You'll find loads of videos on it if you want to search it up, the 150 attack uh, against the modern defense, something I'd highly recommend. I believe I've basically covered pretty much every viable option against one, two, e, sorry, one pawn e4. If there is something that you disagree with me on, or something you would like me to expand upon in the comments section, then please drop a comment, let me know. If this is your first time on the channel, then I really appreciate it if you could subscribe if this was of use to you. Um, I want to wait until the end of the video if I ask people to subscribe, because I want to provide value and entertainment before like I'm asking people to subscribe. I don't know why people do it at the start of their videos. Uh, I'm sure I've been guilty of that before, in all honesty, though. But anyway, yeah, if you want to look further in depth at some of these openings, the playlists to videos on my channel, including them, will be linked below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.